China is one of the oldest countries in the world, with a history spanning more than 5,000 years. However, there are few to no accounts that discuss the existence of love between people of the same gender. Most historians believe that this is because of the culture of ancient China and Western influences that erased the history of gay people. Despite the censorship, ancient China was once ruled by a few emperors who were reportedly homosexual. From marrying nine concubines in one day to having lust like no other, these emperors proved that anyone can become a ruler and can love whoever they want at the same time. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Emperor Wan Li of the Ming Dynasty Wan Li Emperor is the Ming Dynasty's 12th emperor. The dynasty was founded by the Hongwu Emperor and was dubbed the Great Ming. This is after the dynasty attempted to create a society of self-sufficient rural communities ordered in a rigid, immobile system that would guarantee and support a permanent class of soldiers for his dynasty. The empire's standing army exceeded one million troops, and the navy's dockyards in Nanjing were the largest in the world. However, things are about to change after succeeding emperors take the throne. For example, 14 years after Emperor Wan Li's death, the Great Ming is set to be doomed. Wan Li ascended to the throne when he was 10 years old and reigned for 48 years. The emperor was still a fine ruler in the first and midterms. During his first 10 years, he nominated Zhang Zhujeng as the cabinet's first minister and implemented several changes and reforms. The three major battles of Wan Li were dubbed military triumphs because they further solidified the Ming Dynasty's frontier power and united the kingdom. But it also cost a lot of money and exacerbated people's exploitation and internal tensions. It didn't even help that Wan Li began to drink in his later years and rarely went to court to listen to politics. Court ministers were caught up in party politics, and the Nurhachi took advantage of the opportunity to emerge in Liaodong and build the Jin, which became the Ming Dynasty's greatest danger. As a result, the infamous Ming army was crushed in the Battle of Sarhu in 1616, losing 90,000 elite men. On top of these, there had been rumors that Emperor Wan Li was actually bisexual, and while his leadership skills had nothing to do with his sexual orientation, his people were still concerned given the conservative environment of ancient China. Emperor Wan Li was a lustful man and everyone knows that. How lustful was he? Well, he reportedly married nine concubines in one day, but people who worked closely with the emperor suggest that he preferred his male concubines. Because of this, he reportedly chose ten attractive and brilliant young eunuchs to wait for him in the palace and slept with them. As a result, these eunuchs are called the Ten in the Palace, and rumors about whether the emperor preferred men over women started to spread like wildfire. Imagine how this affected his credibility, especially since, as the leader of the dynasty, he was expected to produce an heir. Historians also believe that marrying at a young age played a big role in his orientation. In case you do not know, Wan Li married at 14, and as a result, there was a terrible side to this young love. For the young monarch, one lady was never enough, and we established that fact earlier in the video. Aside from this, Wan Li was granted permission to have a major consort, associate consorts, and even consorts with the unflattering label of ordinary consorts. In short, he was living every teenage boy's fantasy. However, just like any teenage dream, it was set to end. And in Wan Li's case, it was not a happy ending. Emperor Ai of Han I bet you have heard the term cut sleeve, which is usually used to refer to homosexuality, but did you know where it originated? It came from the last emperor who ruled the Western Han Dynasty. According to the Book of Han, Emperor Ai was in love with an official named Dong Xian, and throughout his relationship with Emperor Ai, Dong Xian received countless favors from the emperor, which ultimately made him one of the most hated people in the empire. Going back, the term Passion of the Cut Sleeve comes from a story about Emperor Ai and Dong Xian. Based on the narrative, Emperor Ai chopped off his sleeve rather than disturb the sleeping Dong Xian when he had to get out of bed. This happened one afternoon when they fell asleep for a nap. The two men were well known for sleeping together on straw mats daily, 
and since then, the term spread across the empire and was used to refer to love between two men. As previously stated, Dong Xian is favored, and Emperor Ai lavishes him with gifts whenever possible. As a result, by the time Emperor Ai died, Dong Xian had risen to the position of Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and a lot of the elite didn't like this because they believed that this was unlikely to be attributable to skill. Instead, it was due to his connection with the Emperor. Why? This is because Emperor Ai would do anything for this favorite. The Emperor was so in love that he heaped honors on Dong at an alarming rate, which disturbed the court. Dong and his wife relocated to the palace, and Dong's sister was appointed as an imperial consort. His father was also elevated to the rank of acting Marquis, and Dong Xian was given a house as opulent as an imperial palace by Emperor Ai. To top it off, anyone who would tarnish Dong Xian's honors was harshly punished. But wait, there's more. Emperor Ai created Dong the Marquis of Gao An in 3 BC. He did this despite the strong resistance from his Prime Minister Wang Jia. The following year, the Prime Minister sent a report to Emperor Ai requesting that the awards given to Dong be reduced, warning the Emperor that Dong would face the same fate as Emperor Wen's favorite Dong Tong, who starved to death when Emperor Wen's heir took his possessions, or Emperor Wo's favorite Han Yan who was beheaded by Empress Dowager Wang after being accused of improperly acquiring imperial style. But Emperor Ai didn't listen to any of this. Instead, he accused Wang Jia of crimes and forced him to die by suicide through fasting. Soon after, Wang Jia's fear was proven to be true when Emperor Ai suddenly died, and Dong was greatly affected by the Emperor's sudden passing. As a result, the palace secretary was directed to draft an impeachment article against Dong, accusing him of failing to care for Emperor Ai during his illness, and soon after, Dong was barred from entering the palace and was fired from his position. This then leads to the tragic death of Dong and his wife who committed suicide that very same night. Emperor Wen of Han Emperor Wen was Emperor Gao's son, and rumors have it that just like his father and stepbrother, he was also in a same-sex relationship with a man named Deng Tong. Deng Tong is reported to have been Emperor Wen's favorite person. Initially, these two people were not deemed to have any significant impact mainly because Deng Tong possessed no exceptional abilities and was only good at punting boats. But it was Deng Tong's talent for punting that allowed him to serve in the palace as an official in charge of the court's ships. Not to mention Deng Tong got the opportunity to meet Emperor Wen of the Han Dynasty through this. As expected, Deng Tong's improbable rise up the social ladder upset a lot of authorities. Records also revealed that Emperor Wen's dream about a boatman played a big role in this. According to the stories that circulated in the Han court, Emperor Wen had a vision of himself being helped on his journey to heaven by a torn-robed boatman. This was elaborated by the grand historian Sima Qian, writing, Once Emperor Wen dreamed that he was trying to climb to heaven, but could not seem to make his way up. Just then, a yellow-capped boatman boosted him from behind, and he was able to reach heaven. Following this dream, Emperor Wen kept a lookout for anyone who resembled the figure from his vision, and it was when the Emperor was in this mentality that he purportedly met Deng Tong for the first time. When the Emperor saw the man's ripped robe, he was persuaded that this was the man from his dream. This strange meeting sparked an unusual friendship between Emperor Wen and Deng Tong that lasted a lifetime. Even though Emperor Wen purportedly got obsessed with Deng Tong, the Emperor first had no idea what to do with his new companion. Emperor Wen purportedly offered Deng Tong a role that reflected what happened in the dream. The Emperor even paid visits to Deng Tong's home to entertain himself, and gave Deng Tong the rights to a range of copper-bearing mountains in Yandao, Shu province, and allowed him to mint copper coins for himself until the so-called Deng family cash circulated throughout the empire. Surely this is the classic story of rags to riches. Deng Tong's fairy tale life did not end happily ever after. After all, his prominence and fortunes depended on the goodwill and generosity of the ailing Emperor Wen. As a result, when the Emperor died, Deng Tong not only lost a friend, but also the guardian of his social and financial security. In short, without the Emperor, 
Dung Tong was powerless in the face of nobles and courtiers who did not believe he belonged. Worse, Dung Tong's most vocal critic was reputedly Emperor Wen's son, Emperor Jing, who wanted to get rid of him as soon as he could. And that's what he did. While these emperors' lives were not the easiest, in the end, all they did was fall in love and sometimes, even the ruler of one of the biggest dynasties in the world needs a little love while they sit on their throne. How about you? What do you think about these emperors? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe for more stories from history.